Welcome to the NIMIC podcast. Uh, I'm Basti, your host today for the talk about the Zero Knowledge Proof Setup Ceremony. Uh, to talk about this, I'm here with Pascal, a core developer of the team, and Inesh, our technical writer of the team. Uh, how are you guys doing? All good. Very well, yes. How about you? Uh, I'm good, thank you. Forgot to do this. Excellent. Um, so, uh, to start this off, uh, what uh, and what to, just to give some context, what is the zero knowledge proofs used for within the NIMIC protocol, anyways? Yeah, go for that. So, uh, we are using uh, zero knowledge proofs to uh, basically prove the macro chain, and we have the prover nodes who generate those proofs, and uh, we basically assist full nodes and light nodes to quickly uh, sync to the chain. And the zero knowledge proofs uh, do that in a small proof that is constant in size. And it's recursive, so it's very quick to uh, generate a proof after a proof after after a proof. All right. In essence, in essence, it means we don't have to download gigabytes of data, right? Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, that sounds very useful to have. <laughs> um, so. Uh, and to like exp uh, get a little bit more into the um, ceremony, why is the ceremony like this uh, even required to facilitate zero knowledge proofs like that? So it actually depends on the type of zero knowledge proof you are using. And the one we are using is so called ZK Snark. Um, and we're using a proving system now, it gets a bit technical called Graph 16. Uh, but essentially, this type of um, zero knowledge proof. We require, we require some keys, a prover key and a verification key. And they are specific to the statement you're, you're proving. And the problem is if one person generates these keys, um, there's a byproduct, uh, which is also called toxic waste. And if you know this toxic waste, you can prove any false statement. So you can fake proofs. So you can forge proofs. Exactly. And that's obviously bad for the security. And that's why this kind of setup is usually called a trusted setup, because you need to trust this person to do everything right and to destroy the toxic waste. Um, but trusting in one person is difficult. And a ceremony is there for removing parts of the trust or disputing the trust. So in the end, the ceremony does the same thing. It creates these keys that we need. But as long as one of the participants that participates in the ceremony is honest and destroys the toxic waste, um, it's secure. The others can't recover the toxic waste. The others can't forge proofs as long as there's one honest person. So you would need the toxic waste of all participants to have the proper right. toxic waste to forge proofs with. Exactly. exactly. Right. Only if all of them combine theirs. Oh, I see. Then you could forge. Okay, very interesting. Um, and uh, to dive a little bit deeper, how does a ceremony like this even work? How? What are the steps involved in this? What is what? What is it like? Yeah. So first, we need two phases um, to want to generate the keys, uh, the paras parameters of the keys, right? The general parameters. Exactly. That are only specific to the curve that we're using or the yes. pairing. And then in the second phase, we generate the keys itself. The keys itself specialized on the statements we want to put. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So two phases. Two phases. How uh, how long are they going to be? Do you have is there like any like ballpark number uh, as to like how long stuff like this takes? It depends on the number of participants in the end. Yeah. Um, we can have as many participants as we want, but obviously we don't want the whole thing to run for years. Right. Uh, so there's no strict time limit when it needs to end. Uh, we are a bit flexible in that. Um, also, some of the participants can contribute in parallel, not all of them. So there is some sequentially a se sequential um, action involved. And um, so what, what we know from other ceremonies is that they usually run for a few months mm -hmm. and have maybe a couple of hundred to even thousands of contributors, depending oh, wow. on how it's being done. Um, the very first ones maybe had only tens, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, I think uh, the, the one that we based ours on uh, from Cello had uh, hundreds of... Hundreds, okay. Yeah. 
on okay not for, bad in in the order of magnitude of a hundred okay yeah that uh, also segues a little bit nicely into my next question which is basically when um considering there's like a very high interest for this mm -hmm. um how is this then managed to make the ceremony still run smoothly uh, because as i understand it you need to basically know something in advance uh, out of the participants uh, and then they also need to show up uh, yeah yeah Really? Um, so there are several things involved. First of all, you need to register. You create your own key pair. Um, you send us only the public key and you need to uh, also keep your private key. Don't use it until it was your turn. Um, that was one of the main things that happened when we tested the ceremony locally uh, to make sure that everything works. And then at some point we'll tell you it's your turn so you need to start this program and you need to run the program it will be computationally heavy so it will use probably 100 percent of your cpu for quite a while uh, quite a while means a few hours until even maybe a day or so depending on your cpu how how good your computer is and only then when the program stops and says oh you're done then you're released of your duty for one of the phases. Ideally, you contribute to both phases. Uh, that means the same thing will happen twice. Uh, the phases are sequential. So you generate another key for the second phase to send us that key and you do the same thing. The process is super similar, but you need to do it twice. And the, but also the participation in one phase does not require you to also participate in the other. Not strictly. Not strictly. Uh, it's obviously something we want because we want to have as many people in both phases so if people have the time that's fine uh, we can also always add participants um, while a phase is running so if you didn't register before um, and it's running and you realize oh this is going on i want to participate it's still fine you can um, but ideally we would. ideally also to to know how many people we have and to um, to do the math, how long things uh, how long things will be taking. Pre-registration is great. Mm -hmm. um, okay, nice. Um, so the next question would then be, um, what is sort of the implication of a successful ceremony like that? Uh, first of all, for our ecosystem or our blockchain in specific, but also for the wider crypto space as a whole. Um, for Nimic itself. It means that uh, people can trust the zero knowledge proofs that we create, and that means if you if you don't use a full client that downloads the whole blockchain, but the client, a light client that um, only downloads the zero knowledge proof and jumps basically a lot of the blocks, uh, then you can be sure that these proofs are valid and not forged, as long as all, one of the participants of the ceremony was honest, which hopefully is the case if we have. Uh, um, a lot of participants, right? Fingers crossed. Oh, fingers crossed. And um, it also has some implications for the wider crypto space or um, other projects because these parameters of the phase one that we create, they are not specific to the statements we prove. They can be used by anyone. Anyone who wants to use this specific kind of zero knowledge proof on these specific cryptographic elliptic curves that we are using. Uh, can reuse these results, run their own second phase, and have uh, have zero knowledge proofs with that. So that simplifies the setup for anybody else using uh, the same like phase one parameters, basically. Correct. Yeah. Very good. Okay, interesting. So to uh, basically kind of a similar question as one that I posed before, but maybe diving a little bit deeper on the technical side of things. Um, how is uh, the ceremony, like on a technical level, how is this actually facilitated and how does it reach those goals of um, providing a trustworthy setup, even if only one participant uh, is honest? Okay, so um, maybe I should first tell a bit more about the organization of it. We talked about the two phases, that's one part of it and then there are multiple rounds. I hinted at it before when I said uh, some people can actually participate in parallel. So each round will consist of multiple participants contributing in parallel. Basically, we, we, we need to get a lot of data. It needs to be computed. And we divide that into small chunks 
So each participant can, uh, in, in a round, basically work on one of these chunks. Once it finished, you work on another chunk and so on. And we probably will have like six, seven people per round working on parallel. And then we have multiple of these rounds um, until we have all the participants done, basically. And all that organization involves um, first an automated coordinator which makes sure that you don't work on the same thing as someone else at the same time. Um, but also it requires manual work because as soon as the next round starts, we need to verify that everything went well in the, in, in the previous round. We need to know who's the next person to start. Maybe the, the persons for the next round are not reachable, so we might need to swap participants and things like that. There's some manual work involved for sure, and it's not little, um, but yeah, uh, some of the work is done by by a very dumb but uh, important program that makes sure no two people are doing the same thing, and the other work will be on us. And then you had the second part of the question, which yes, is odd. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. It's about how the ultimately how the goal is reached that a single honest participant makes sure that the entire process yields a trustworthy uh, setup key or uh, whatever the outcome of that ceremony like this is um, so that you can trust that outcome of the ceremony yeah so basically uh, there are two parts to this first of all it is important that every participant computes the um, computations correctly and that can be verified by outsiders. Uh, we'll run our own verifiers, but at the end of the ceremony, everyone gets basically the whole list of computations called a transcript and can verify it too. Um, and the second part to it is that everyone has their own private key, right? You send your public key to us, but the private key is on you. And you have this plus some randomness, and you add this to the overall computation. And to get to this toxic waste, you would need to know all of the private keys of all of the persons. So as long as one person destroys the private key, um, there's no way of getting to the original, let's say, concatenation of all private keys, mm -hmm. right? And that's how it's uh, achieved. So it basically works a little bit like an aggregated key pair in some sense, where if I know all of the, uh, like, private keys I can basically aggregate them together and yeah. uh, have a key that can actually uh, perform for yeah, exactly. yeah it's it's similar to that uh, not exactly but I don't want to go into the oh, no, uh, deep no. math but uh, yeah I, it's definitely a good analogy okay very interesting um, and I think that is all the questions that I had for today um, oh no I don't Wait, we do cut this out too. Many cuts. Today, many cuts. We do this with all the cuts. Um, so maybe lastly, uh, how can people who are interested in this, or are people who are going to be interested in contributing, uh, how can they uh, stay updated and uh, get to know about uh, the ceremony? Okay, so we're going to have a blog post about this, and we will also link some documentation uh, to know how the steps are uh, going to be uh, and obviously we are going to do this in, in advance so people can uh, uh, fill a form and uh, participate when we say we are ready. Yeah. All right. Uh, then thank you so much, Pascal. Thank you so much, Ines. Uh, very informative uh, episode of the podcast today. Uh, and for all of you, uh, if you like to learn more about this, uh, subscribe to this channel. Um, and yeah, take care. Goodbye. Bye bye. <laughs>